Okay, here's why I'm excited. Because the Bible says we should be excited about correction. <laughs> oh, hey, where you come from? Look at that. Correct, Correct your baby. Where are you going? Someone brought it to you. Give them an inch, baby. Come on. That's right. So, if you've got a Bible, you're going to go to Hebrews 12. And I'm kind of going to motor through this today. I know it might sound like I'm going to be short. I hope I'm short in that sense. But we're going to kind of motor through it. And I want it to be, I'm just trying to make one set point. And, and it's, it's this point from Hebrews 12. So we're going to read it. And then I'm just going to try to say it kind of over and over again. And, and then it will set us off on this journey today. So Hebrews 12. I know it's kind of small. My apologies. So uh, let your Bible, I guess, if that helps. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you forgotten the exhortation which addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? And if you're left without discipline, in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time, as it seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good, that we may share his holiness. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So, he's just trying to encourage everybody that it's good to be corrected, isn't he? But he's also doing it kind of from the fatherly angle, like, hey, God's going to correct you because he loves you. So, that's kind of the big point, right? That's all I want to do. We can pretty well shut her down right there. God loves us, so he's going to correct us. But it's such a big theme in Scripture. We have to look at more passages. We just have to. It's so broad and everywhere. And it points us to very specific directions. So, like, look at verse 10. Um, for they disciplined us, the earthly fathers disciplined us for a short time, as it seemed best to them. But God disciplines us for our good, that we may share his holiness. So God has a, a specific goal in mind for his correction. He's not just trying to like make you a good person. His goal is to share in his holiness, which is which is his nature. Holy, holy, holy. You know, his nature is holy. That doesn't mean all by itself, it doesn't mean pure. It includes pure. It doesn't mean righteous. It includes righteous. It means I'm nothing like you, nothing like you, nothing like you. So how do you become like someone that you're nothing like? He has to correct. Um, a subject that we're not going to spend too much time on today, but is, we're going to have to come back to it, is that one of the ways he trains us, from this passage, we'll see it's a little different in other places, is testing and trial and suffering and, and stuff that we have to endure. It actually becomes one of the ways that he, he uh, corrects us, one of the ways that he disciplines us. So look at verse 7. It is for discipline that you have to endure. It's for discipline that you're put in situations that you must endure. So anything that we feel like we're enduring right now, meaning it's not going away, <laughs> anything that's going, not going away that's stressing us and taxing us is trying to produce the goal of discipline. And what is the goal of discipline? Verse 10, to share in the nature of God. He's drawing us out of ourselves and into his nature through things that we have to endure. So I'm going to actually use that to encourage us at the end when, when we get to that point. The other benefit, verse 11, 
For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. Can I get an amen? <coughs> okay, but what? Later, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. To who? Those who have been trained by it. So if, if we allow ourselves to be trained by discipline, it yields what kind of fruit? You want more peace? Be trained by the discipline of God. And it's a peaceful fruit of what? Righteousness. It will look a certain way. Things will be right. Things will be right in our heart and our lives. We'll be sharing in His holiness. It will be right. And, and we've got to look at this passage, um, these other passages that are going to say it's more than just being good people. We're sharing in His nature the nature of Jesus Christ. And so I'm going to make an example of that here today. Okay, this correction theme is all through the Bible. So just look at this. We're just going to read these straight through. Revelation 3. God says, Jesus says, Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. Therefore be zealous and repent. That is to say, be excited to repent. Because <laughs> I love you, I'm reproving you, and I'm disciplining you. 94. Blessed is the man whom you discipline, <laughs> O Lord, and whom you teach out of your law. Uh, Psalm 1967. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. I was straying, and then God gave me a swap, but now I keep your word. Um, the verse 75 of 119. I know, O Lord, that your judgments are righteous, and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. When God brings us a, a corrective of any kind, it is because he's being faithful to us. Job 5. Look at this, this is so crazy. See how happy the man is that God corrects. Can I get another amen? Come on, guys. I need a rousing response to this. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Mark. It's the first time you've spoken up in church in like 20 years. I'm amazed, Mark. That was great. Keep that up. <laughs> Uh, so, so yeah, see how happy the man is whom God corrects. So don't reject the discipline of the Almighty. For he crushes, but he also binds up. He strikes, but his hands also heal. We don't want to be running away from the hands of God, because they're also the healing hands. Finally, Proverbs 3. This is the quote that, that Paul's using in Hebrews. Don't despise the Lord's instruction, my son. Don't loathe his discipline, for the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and just as a father, the son he delights in. Okay, so pull out your paper and your pen. If you don't have paper and pen, you have a smartphone, I need you to go, Billy, go to your notes app. You're good, you're not grounded from your phone. All right, so, <laughs> notes <Not> surprisingly. app. Surprisingly. <laughs> Sorry, Billy. Really. I'm surprised, too. <laughs> <laughs> so you can use your notes app, okay, Billy? So what we're going to do is, on a scale of 1 to 10, rarely this is true of me, sometimes this is true of me, always this is true of me. 1 is rarely, 10 is always. Okay, so these statements, okay, I want you to have a little fun with it. Okay, we're going to do this again in a, in a number of weeks when we're done the, the whole correction theme. We're going to see if our number has improved. Okay. <laughs> Let's just start with the easy one, okay? One to ten. Being corrected makes me happy. Okay, I'm doing this too. Well, the by who? That's a great question. Uh, we'll get into that. That's part of the correction. We've got to talk about what's appropriate and what's not, okay? Okay. Um, Baby, yes. Okay, yeah. What'd you write down, baby? <laughs> yeah, I've got quite a few years, so I'm just gonna settle in. This is kind of the yes, hi, baby. Okay, the next one. Here we go. I love hi. being shown where I am wrong. Mommy, hi. Love being shown where I am. If you had the healthiest person and the healthiest source showing you where you're wrong. What would be your response? Okay. Okay. A little, a little lighter. Okay. I enjoy discovering new areas I can grow. Okay. 
a, a little bit lighter one again. I really want to know what the big picture is. I really want to know what the big picture is. If I'm going to be corrected, it's pointing towards someone, toward, towards somewhere, you know. I really, I want to know what the big picture is. Okay, here's the kind of correlated one. I'll make any change to participate in the big picture. Like if I knew what the big picture is, and I knew I had to make some changes to get into that big picture, would I make any change to participate in that big picture? Okay, next one. Kind of drawing off this Hebrews passage. When things are tough, I see the wisdom of God in it. When things are tough, I see the wisdom of God in it. Okay, I'm going to switch it over back to the inside stuff here. My internal life is more important to me than my external life. How my heart is doing is more important to me than what's happening to me in the world. Okay, back to the fun ones. One to ten. I'm easy to correct. These are hard. What? <laughs> Ourselves. Okay. Okay. okay um, have a little fun with it because if you just start crying, it won't always be good either. Okay. Next one. I invite input from others and God so that I can grow and change. And I'm quick to make a change when I am shown it. Okay. <laughs> well, it's, it's going to be comparative to your own situation, so you know what, what would be quick for you this. Do you kind of see the trajectory of these things? You see this point? Okay. I got more. I got more. Don't give up. Don't give up on yourself. Persevere. Oh, sorry about this one. Okay. I do not defend myself when shown that I am wrong. Rarely. Sometimes. That's a negative. Do I? I do not defend myself. I always do not defend myself. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's the opposite. So no more. Oh, I should. <laughs> I should have. Uh, thank you. But yeah, I don't defend myself when shown that I'm wrong. I'm always. Okay, here's the next one. I am quick to apologize and fast to repent. Mm -hmm. Mommy, I Okay, I want to pull us back to where God's going to take us with this stuff, so I'm kind of gearing some of this toward the end of our correction theme. But here's another one. God can trust me with his mission and message. Okay, so because this is a teaching tool, I never run away from conflicts in my relationships. I never run away from conflicts. And then I see conflicts as training for righteousness and holiness. I see conflicts as training for what Hebrews describes as righteousness and holiness. to each other. Being conformed to the image of Jesus is my greatest desire. 
always, my greatest desire is to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Sometimes, my greatest desire is to be conformed to the image of Jesus. Displaying the nature of God with others is my life's purpose. Last, 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 last. The grace of God is my biggest help in life. The grace of God is my biggest help in life. So you guys see what we're doing here? See what's going on? You see why it matters and why it applies? See why it's important? Okay, we're going to get into these passages, we're going to get into the Bible stuff. This, this will be clearer and clearer as we get into it. Um, like, think about, think about, okay, don't tell me your numbers, please don't tell me your numbers. Uh, I could make some jokes about adding them up and averaging them and comparing them to each other, but we won't. Like, our, we're, we're God's church, right? God's church on earth? We're God's church on earth? Are we proud of our scores? <laughs> okay? Okay? So, I, I think some of the questions are asked for us. We're not going back, look at them. Uh, you rate them one to ten, and I always rate ten as a good one. And then I look at, uh, I go back and look at some of your questions. Uh, I never run away from conflicts. And I look at it. Well, I got the wrong, the oh. wrong end of the scale here. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So uh, I, I don't know. I think you got to re ask some of those questions. Actually, it's a double negative thing. I'm gonna have to work on that. One. I will absolutely work on the double negative. My apologies. Thank you for correcting me. <laughs> well, I, I wasn't just meaning the double negative, I, uh, but I just mean the way uh, the way you've got the score too. You know, uh, good ten should be good, baby. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. I tried. That's what I tried to make the phrase actually is that, like the top one. I do not defend myself yeah. and show that I'm wrong. That should be a good thing. So that should be a ten, yeah. ideally in the spirit of God, right? So that, it was trying to be. These are positive statements that are always true or rarely true. Sometimes true. But can we sit on this just for a minute longer, right? Like, like whatever our scores are, whatever, whatever it is, God knows already. Yeah. <laughs> He's wonderful. Like, can we be the church of God like, and survive with really low scores? I don't know. Do you see why this theme now becomes a rather important one? Like, if I can't be corrected, how are we? How, how am I ever going to attain God's name? And if we as a group can't be corrected, how will we ever come into the, the fullness of what God's got for us? You know, it's, it's a very, it's tied directly to the, this big picture stuff that some of it we've already talked about, we'll keep talking about it again. It's just, it's all simple stuff, it's Jesus. But we can, and I, I know again, we're looking at stuff. We can, we can, we can do our Sunday morning show up, but I'm not correctable. Well, what was I doing? What was I doing in the house of God if you can't conform me to the image of Christ? You know, what I mean? this is a really practical question. <laughs> really practical question. So, so to see that heart change and to see these Bible verses that say like. Um, how happy the man is whom God corrects. <coughs> you know, to get there, it's cool. It's cool. In faithfulness, you have afflicted me. So, correction toward what? Um, I'm going to delete that top few marks. Romans 8, 29, For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that 
he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Okay, Hebrews 12 said, so that we may share in his holiness. So the nature of God is holiness. And we're to be conformed to the image of the Son, the Holy One of God, who's the firstborn among many brothers. So I, I'm going I'm to walk this one all the way out. Who's a really good artist among us? Who's a really good artist? Vienna. Who? Vienna. Yeah, uh, Vienna. Present in the room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, oh, I can't. Give her some bondage real quick. Give her some bondage. <laughs> if it's not edible, I cannot do it. Sorry, it just doesn't work. Yes. Yeah. You'll get stick figures. Yeah. Sorry, do you want us to draw something? No, I want one person to draw something. Do you have a baby? She has a bone. <laughs> <laughs> baby, you want to draw something? <laughs> I think Billy should do it. Come on up. Yeah, Billy. Come on up. Billy. Participation <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> Buddy. All right. All right. And I, I, you can't use the excuse of I don't know or something like that. You have to draw something. Okay. I want you to draw a picture of the face of Jesus Christ. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Let me get some. Have a mint. I'm not gonna look at it. Oh yeah. I won't look at it till you. It's too bright, you can't see it. It's so bright. It's all the white sheet. It's so shiny. It's too bright. Clever. Clever. We're too late. Like 50 seconds. you've never seen? Touché, Cherie. Touché. You're a sketch artist. <laughs> that really would backfire if Leanna was here. So it would have been amazing. Oh, it would have been amazing. <laughs> so if I've never seen someone's face, it's going to be hard to get an accurate representation. And, and actually, the sketch artist example, let's just walk that out a little bit further. You know, you can describe a face, and someone who's never seen it can imitate it. But have they actually seen the face? So all this conformity to the image, you know, I thought about talking of the correction theme in terms of, um, you know, like, and I brought it up last week, like a steering wheel on a car. It corrects the direction. Hebrews really takes it from kind of the spanking, scourging direction. But really, it's still just this idea of if I'm driving a car, I gotta stay in my lane 
and I got to make tiny little adjustments to my steering wheel to stay in the lane. You ever driven a tractor? Alex, you driven a tractor? <laughs> you didn't live in Cola and you driven a tractor. So you're on, you're on the field, okay? Can you just like look for your mark at the end of the field? Just hold the steering wheel right there and yep. you'll make it to the mark? Yep. Well, what's happening to the steering wheel on auto steer? What's happening to the steering wheel on auto steer? But when you're when you're driving through a field, is it always perfectly even? So what is that unevenness doing to your tire? So you gotta you gotta correct. You gotta turn it back. Yeah, yeah. This is this is a, this is a valid illustration. This is a valid analogy. You're just making small adjustments to actually achieve the goal you're going. Otherwise, you can end up in a funny direction, and then guess how much money you make at the end of your payday when you've got a field that's looking weird. <laughs> It'll be your last payday, okay? But the Bible has a really great illustration. It's using the term image. 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 So it's like, it is the sculptor idea. We start out as people, and what God does is he chips away everything that's not the image of Jesus. He's conforming that image. And so it produces Christ-likeness. Okay, so let's just read this together. God, and he gave the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and be carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. But rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, and each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Discipline yields the peaceful fruit Righteousness. Okay, this idea of correction is toward developing the image of Christ in a people and in me. Grow up into every way into him who is the head of Jesus Christ. There is a goal, there is a direction. How does he train us? Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let's also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sons against himself, so you will not grow weary and lose heart. So God is going to train us through having us fix our eyes on Jesus to endure through things that are conflicting us. And then he ends with this encouragement. He says, Therefore strengthen the hands that are weak and the knees that are feeble and make straight paths for your feet so the limb that's lame won't be put out of joint but rather be healed. He's just saying, be strong, guys. Like, take heart. The sufferings, the challenges, the trials, the difficulties... They are, they are for discipline, and you've got to endure them. So endure them. You can put a smile on your face. We're going to look at that passage out of James 1. And consider them joy when you go through various trials. Because they are going to uh, produce the fruit of righteousness, and they're going to produce the sharing of God's holiness. So he's encouraging us with, there's a nice, beautiful result of enduring. But please, endure. Okay? Um, how's everybody doing? Everybody doing this? Everybody doing this? Okay. It's kind of all I want to say. What do you guys think?
Has everybody here gotten a spanking? Everybody gotten a spanking? Art, it's time. <laughs> I use spanking just because it actually uses the word scourge in Hebrews there. So that's actually what he's referencing from Proverbs is, is the absorption of impact on the bottom posterior from Proverbs. It's actually this, it's actually this topic. The idea is our... We're, we're like... We're like... Sorry, Billy. We're like mangy kids who are running away from correction. <laughs> and the problem is, the longer you run, does it make it easier or harder? <laughs> which is why, which is why the idea in that quiz was, I'm quick to be corrected. Like, I don't know about you guys. But it makes sense when you come to correction to start with a verbal warning, doesn't it? Start with a verbal warning. So Amber, are you getting verbal warnings at home? <laughs> right, like about basic stuff. Don't touch that, uh, you know, there's an uh, outlet, an electrical outlet. Don't touch that. You start with the verbal. And then if you proceed, you might do the finger flick or whatever your trick is in your family or whatever. So you proceed. <laughs> Does God start with verbal warnings? Yeah. Does God proceed? Yeah. But there's this funny thing where I can choose to run away, or I can choose to stay still, submit, and allow any correction of words that he wants to speak to me. The problem is, if I let it go too long, corrective words may not be strong enough to get to my inner heart. You might need to use... Strokes. Okay. But you probably test his words. Explain that. You stick your fingers in the electrical outlet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do kind of experiment. Yeah. What do you mean we can't or shouldn't or you're saying no to? Yeah, we do test. That's what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> What's he talking about? Why is it so interesting? <laughs> we do that too. All right, I'm not going to belabor this because we're going to spend some time on it. But this was kind of where we wanted to start, was with that quiz, with that passage, to see God's love drives him to correct us. We embrace correction, we get excited about correction, and then we get to the goal faster. We get to the goal faster when we're embracing what God's correcting us. All right, how's that feel? Oh, when we get to the Hebrews, it's going to be really good. But that was actually part of more of the Hebrews teaching. I don't think that was too. All right, so let's just talk to God about it. We'll be wrapped up. I'm going to sing that Purifying My Heart song one more time. Okay, God. Um, yep. We are sitting here aware that we are people of... of strong will. <laughs> We're people of strong will. I have a strong will. Strong headed, strong minded. Yeah. And the funny thing is, we're even kind of proud about how strong willed we are. Probably because it has gotten us through some tough times or helped us through big loss or you know, different difficulties. Our strong will kind of we, we kind of credit that strong will. But the Lord's Prayer says, your kingdom come, your will be done. How's my strong will going to accomplish your will be done? So there's going to be somewhere that we have to give in and allow your will to be done. Lord, we need that. We need that. That's, that's Philippians 2. May we have this attitude that was in Christ Jesus, who had a will of his own but submitted to the will of the Father, and because of his obedience was given a name that's above every name. We're not going to be proud of our strong will in heaven. It's actually going to be a mark of shame. Those who gave in to the will of God will be glorified. Not because they were so great, but because they gave in to the will of God. They submitted. And he was able to do his will in and through. 
this is a cool picture. This is a really cool picture. This is Jesus on earth. So I ask God that you would seat this quiz in our hearts, seat this quiz and the results of it. Give us a, a hint of fear. Lord, I was kind of hoping for a hint of that shock of self-awareness. I'm not so easy to correct. And that scares me. But I pray that that would be true. And God, we don't want to run away from that fact. Why am I not easy to correct? Why? And you're the one who's got to guide us through that. We must be guided through it. It's really kind of too big for ourselves. So it is the grace of God that's my greatest strength in life. Um, God, for our whole church family, all 12 of us, um, we can do it. We can become a people conformed to the image of Jesus Christ and attain unity of the faith, the knowledge of the Son of God, a mature man to the measure of the stature of fullness of Jesus Christ. But we're not going to do it on our own will and our own strength. It's going to be done by submitting to yours. Pray that we get there, God. I do pray that we get there. So as we get into this theme, God, I pray that the passages would be chosen clearly and, and uh, obviously that they would guide us, that they would be uh, nice signs down this road so we can get there, God. I do pray that we get there. Otherwise, yeah, I pray that your love, joy, peace would cover us over today and that uh, all that you want to do this week would be done with us. In your name, amen. Uh, let's just do this Purify My Heart real quick. Oh, cool. oh, cool.